Hello everyone, this is Impulse, and welcome to episode number 22 of our Future Craft Let's Play. This week we are on the, the official release, 1.5.1. Hopefully you guys are on it too. Uh, some good improvements over 1.5. They did some things, got the frame rates back up, optimized some of the lighting stuff again, and, uh, and it can combine enchanted books now, that's cool. So anyway, uh, you might notice already I'm running a texture pack. I don't usually do that. It's the Doc M77 Faithful Texture Pack. I modified it a little bit. Had to get my logo in there, of course. And uh, yeah, the reason I'm doing that is kind of in honor of Doc. He gave me a shout out this week. Liked my Expender tutorial video. He actually implemented the ride and glide technology in his own world. And uh, that was pretty cool. So if uh, he sent you my way and you're a new subscriber, uh, welcome. I uh, guess I should explain what we're doing here. This is a Let's Play, but it's a little different than the uh, Let's Plays you're probably used to. Uh, we do have some twists on it. For one, I uh, make sure I'm always playing on the latest version of Minecraft, whether it be an official release or snapshots, whatever I can get my hands on. And uh, along the way, show you some of those features, you know, in the snapshots as they come out and kind of show you how some of the new cool stuff work. I keep hearing a zombie. He's going to sneak up on me. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, you get a sneak peek of some of the features that are going to be coming to you uh, in the next update and things like that. And the other thing uh, that's different about this Let's Play is we do a choose your own adventure. So basically this world is, is not just my world. It's actually our world. Uh, you guys help me decide at the end of every episode. Um, I post some options on what I should do for the next one and you guys all vote on it in the comments. And yep, then we do whatever uh, the majority decides. So. Man, that's the thing I can't get used to. These skeletons are way harder now. <laughs> so, yep. And, of course, playing in hard mode. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Make sure you stick around long enough to get to the, uh, the end of the video where I give you those options so you can partake in the voting. And for those of you that voted last week, thank you very much. Um, it was actually pretty easy to tally up the, the votes. I didn't even have to count them all because it was a landslide victory. And of course, I kind of saw it coming. The gold farm uh, won, the, won the, the poll. So yeah, so we're going to be doing a gold farm this episode. Looking forward to it. You can see I'm ch chopping down trees. I'm, I got a little makeshift tree farm. I'm not going to replant the whole thing here, but we'll just get it, get it back going a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I had to do a couple things just to get ready for the gold farm. So let's go take a look at what I've done off camera to prepare for this. Because this gold farm is uh, its going to be a lot of material. It's going to be a big build. Big build, definitely. So, oh, well, I'm here. Last week we left off. I was working on this nether hub. I finished up at least this room. Uh, you can see I put the ceiling on, the little lapis lazul blocks, and uh, a little bit of lighting here and there. Kind of framed out the portal. Uh, you know, just kind of gave it a little decoration. So it's not bad. Not bad. I'm liking it. Uh, and, oh yeah, and I'm working on the, uh, the speedway. So we had most of this done, and I started doing, so that's the way to the, the stronghold slash end portal. And this way, we got the witch farm and the blaze cage. So you can see I got the speedway going super fast. Witch farm that way. Whoop. <laughs> and the blaze cage this way. And look, uh, that's why I'm collecting wood. <laughs> Ran out of trap doors. So need to keep working on that. It's using the tree farm for that. Shouldn't take me too long. I'm just going to stash this here for now. Along with all my other junk. Because, like I said, we're going to be working on the gold farm today. So, let me show you what I've been collecting. Okay, so here's some of the materials we're going to need for the gold farm. We need 1,300 string, 
Got that taken care of. 260 tripwire hooks right there. And another 260 fence gates. Okay, that's that top chest there. And then we got 100, or 1150 half slabs we're going to need. And 28 droppers. I got a couple extra on, on some of these stacks just in case, you know, I drop some, lose some, whatever. Uh, got... I uh, need 23 comparators. I got a few extra here just in case. Change my mind. 81 redstone dust was needed. And 130 glass. 624 cactus. And here's a big one. 981 hoppers. Yeah, that took a while to get. All right, next chest. We got uh, 130 normal pistons is what we need. And then 390 sticky pistons. And then here we go again. This wasn't easy. Redstone repeaters, we needed 534. Torches, we needed 390. And then 1,528 total blocks needed to build this thing. So that's all the material I had to gather to get make sure we had enough stuff to build this gold farm. And, of course, the gold farm is going to be my 3-in-1 nether farm. Hopefully you guys all got a chance to see that video came out last week. Uh, it wasn't a coincidence, I can tell you that, that I, I knew the gold farm idea was coming. I had to do something, had to get ready. So, before we get started on that build, since we do have a lot of new subscribers to the channel, probably people new to Future Craft, I figured we could just do a real quick kind of world tour. Uh, so I'll run you through it real quick, and I want to show you kind of how I got that material. So, obviously you can see the tree farm, you know, it's nothing fancy. Nothing automated like I usually do. I just needed something real quick and dirty just to make sure I could get, you know, some wood. Also, same thing with this cactus farm. You know, I just set up a bunch of cactus. You got to stagger them or else they won't grow. And, uh, yeah, just come through. I knock them out and collected them. So that's where I was getting those materials. That was mainly for the, you know, I needed the wood for the chest to make the hoppers. I need the cactus. That's going to take care of the magma cubes. And uh, basically, what you're looking at here, this is kind of my, I don't know, it's the collection of this mountain and this here is my base. Up there is my sleeping quarters. Here's my portal inside of there. Um, and then I kind of set this up because I was AFKing so much. I didn't want a mob to accidentally come through my my piston door there by stepping on the pressure plate and ac accidentally finding his way in. You know, I'd come up here and just station myself AFK. So had to be safe. But yeah, that's the portal to the nether hub. I got a branch mine down there. I'm not going to go down there right now. It takes forever to go down and up because uh, nothing fancy there either. I don't have an elevator yet. But let's go look at some of the other stuff. The string was massive. I needed 1,300 string. So let's head on over that way. And I got ender pearls. So you, if you're new to the, the series, you can probably guess where these came from. And we'll get there in a minute. And go over this way, see if I can remember which one of these is, I believe it's this one. Entrance to the uh, spider farm, yeah. Let's see. Yep. Go down here. I got a couple things down here. There was a couple, um, basically an abandoned mine shaft was over here and was able to find a skeleton spawner which is actually behind that wall. We closed off that room. You know, I got the water carrying them over and up and then dropping them. So you can probably, I don't know how long it's going to take. Let's see if we'll get one to drop real quick. I'm sure they're making their way up now. You can almost hear them. Yep, there we go. And I basically drop them so they want to hit kill. Oh, two hit kill. <laughs> in that case. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of my way of getting arrows and XP when I, this was like the first XP kind of system I had. So let's see. Yeah, still got some leftover arrows and stuff. I usually carry a infinity one bow, so don't need it. Uh-oh. Party out here. Man, these guys, can't even hardly get close to them no more. So we'll go on this way. And over here, let's see if I got it turned on right now. Yep, I still got a spider spawner under here. I got the lights on right now, so nothing's going to spawn, but I'll go ahead and turn that on. Oh, you can hear it right away. And here they go. So basically, this is a spider spawner, very active, obviously. And they just get washed down this pipe here, and then they get in this water. This water's kind of pushing them down, and they 
They have a hard time climbing back up. Let's see if this guy's tracking me. We'll get him in here. Here come more. I got them just out of range, so they'll just keep coming. And you can see what happens is they'll drown in there. And uh, basically, I can just stand here and, you know, collect the string. There you go. And uh, AFK'd here for a while. I put it in this chest. And it was pretty easy to get the string this time around because I guess I had left myself AFK for a while and this chest was pretty much full. So I got all the string I needed without having to do any work this week. So that was pretty, uh, I was pretty happy to find that. I'll go ahead and turn this back off. And let's keep rolling. I got more to show you. Let me get out of this this place and uh, I'll meet you over back at the base all right coming back up on the base you can see I got a little just makeshift cow pig sheep farm I don't know what happened to my chickens I have to find some more sometime and uh, we can see here is I actually built this waterfall and you can kind of see it we'll get a closer look it actually turns on and off so I got this basic torch tower here that goes up and activates some pistons. What's crazy is, so right now the water's getting turned off, as it takes forever for it to clear out. Water just has to drop. So I will leave it, and you'll see when I come back out, it should be gone or close to gone. So in here, I'm setting up an uh, area for a massive storage system. Worked on that this last week, and I uh, can't wait to get started on that because I just got I got junk everywhere, and you could probably tell from this I used to have a powered rail generator, wasn't afraid to use it. Uh, I got a little cow breeding cell right here. It's uh, it's hurting right now because they changed the way that the uh, dispensers work, so no longer it, will it spit it out and. Just bring it back in in one in one push of a button. So I have to do a little work around this thing. I'm not satisfied with it. Uh, needed more cows in there anyway. It's too small and the, the babies glitch out. So uh, unless they fix that bug, I'll probably have to do something different here anyway. Over here, let me see if I got any seeds. Hopefully there's some bone meal in these things. Yep. Is a uh, bread maker, basically, if you want to call it that. It does potatoes and carrots too, but you step on the pressure plate. And plant the seed, and bam, hooks up the wheat for you. So this one was uh, partially my design. I wanted I wanted the uh, pressure plate in the floor, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still happy with that one, even though I accidentally set it off every once in a while. Uh, over here, I got my my snowman for my infinite snow supply. Got my shovels in here so I can harvest snow whenever I need. Nothing big there. Hopefully you guys know that trick. Basically, all you got to do is put him in the, the blocks there and shove a couple pistons into his head, one out and one over, pushes him into the corner, and then he can make snow over and over again. You can harvest it. Simple. And then, here's how I made the hoppers. I got, it's only one cell, but I got a basically uh, iron golem farm in here. Got the villagers, got the doors. You guys have probably seen Doc M77's video uh, on how to make this. I kind of snuck it into the mountain. You can see I had to uh, make some skylights so that the uh, sunlight hits the doors so that it can be counted as a village. But uh, that's basically just taking the golems, dropping them down, carrying them over to here. And I got some cleanup to do, of course, but brings them into this lava blade. There's some hoppers there. You can see it's been collecting some roses. And the reason the roses are stuck in there is because I filled up this whole chest with iron so that uh, all it will take is iron. And then basically I don't want the roses in there. I can take them out and dispatch them every once in a while if I need to. But totally thinking about automating that as well, of course. So yeah, here's how I got my iron. So between that and the, the little tree farm I had, that's how I got on them hoppers. And of course, you're probably wondering how I got all the uh, redstone to make the repeaters, the torches, uh, you know, the redstone dust that I need, the comparators, the droppers, you know, all that stuff needed it. So, let's see. I will take you on over to my source of redstone. I know you might be thinking branch mining, but nope. 
I mean, I do a little bit of that down there, but that's pretty much just to find diamonds. And you probably guessed it from the sign earlier. I forgot I already gave it away. <laughs> Which farm? This way. Something we just worked on a couple episodes ago. And it's still got a long ways to go to, to make it totally efficient. But I do have a sorting system over here set up. Getting the redstone. See, I got some more even since I last collected. A uh, ton of glowstone dust collecting. You know, this all these are filling up. And I got a pretty cool item elevator over here. You can see it's actually sorting items as we speak. That's what all the flashy lights are. So probably looking like some glowstone dust is coming in. It's cool. And over here is the actual shifting floor design. This is my, my design. It's a smart shifting floor. Uh, basically, tripwires will only shift the uh, row that they're on. Not sure I can get any to spawn right now because we see, you can see, I've got a lot of half slabbing to go. I've been kind of lighting it up anyway, but yeah, there's a lot of work. So the way I made this efficient, or more efficient, is I built a tower and I just go to the top there in AFK and that'd kind of make it so, you know, my my bubble that, that mobs can spawn in would, would pretty much just reach, you know, this general area and at least help out with the rates. So, here, let me crack this open real quick. Somebody did mention that I covered this up uh, without really showing how it works. So, hopefully I can do this without breaking it real quick here. And then I'll just kind of pillar up a little bit so you can see. Oh, i got to put a half slab down. That's right. Jump. Another one. All right, so the bottom layer basically is just like in, in my video. And it's uh, uh, when the tripwire is tripped there, go down one more, uh, that torch turns off, and then this piston comes up, and signal goes through in a uh, clock, basically. And that makes it so the floor shifts back and forth. And then the top one is pretty much the same, except... Oh, <laughs> Except I had to shift everything, one too high, I had to shift everything back a little bit. And so you still have the clock here, you can see the torch there for it. Um, that's actually the redstone block that's going to, once that's retracted, allow the clock to function. And then once it gets through the clock, it basically heads through these repeater chains into the pistons and push back and forth. And the only difference between this side and that side is you see that, that three tick delay there. Uh, the other side only has a one tick delay, so that's the difference there, and that's how I was able to stack them basically. So if you watch the the smart shifting floor and you want to know how to stack them on top of each other, uh, that's how I did it. So let's see here. Let me fix this back up. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm back in the Nether Hub now. We're gonna head over to the Blaze Cage. Basically, it's just the my Blaze XP farm, but I don't really use it for XP, mainly for the blaze rods. And it's just this way. And you can kind of tell why I need to finish the trap doors. You slow down quite a bit without them. So here we go. Um, got the blaze spawner up in here. This is basically just Ethos Funnel design. Um, do have a little AFK switch that I install. It's basically a timer that allows me to stand here and forget all about you know, the fact that I'm AFK'd for hours on end without too many blaze collecting. It'll basically shut itself off after uh, a certain amount of time. So let's see if we got any in here. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> there they are. So, you know, normal normal design you've probably seen from Etho. Crushes them down to one heart and take care of them. Got a place to store the blaze rods over here. go. That one probably took damage on the way down. Oh, I didn't even get any drops from that. Alright, so let's head back. Oh, and the reason I call it the blaze cage is because the entire thing is uh, made out of iron bars, so it makes it look like it's a cage. Alright, head back to the hub. Gotta love this speedway here. Woo! My ice skating rink. And finally, we'll go this way. The stronghold. Because we're going to make our way on over to the end. 
so you can see my Enderman farm. Let me get there and I'll meet you in a sec. Okay, so I'm down here at layer two at the Enderman, or at the end, and I am about to take the journey on out to where the Enderman farm is, about 150 blocks away, but I did want to show you I actually have a minecart booster. Uh, rumor was that it was fixed, but as you can see, I still can make it 150 blocks on regular track. So uh, it probably doesn't make it the full 800 that it used to. I'm guessing that that's probably been nerfed, but uh, anyway, if you want to see how to build this, I do have a tutorial on it on my channel as well. Gets us there no problem. You didn't see any powered rails on the way, so it's pretty cheap to build. Just takes a couple minecarts, and oh, that is loud. Let's turn it down. All right. So yeah, we got a little enchantment set up down here, anvil. Got some chests to store my books because I'm working on building up a library, and uh, ender chest of course, so I can get access to my diamonds, which depleting. I had a. Quite, I went through quite a, a lot of diamonds trying to prepare for this build we're going to do today. So I got this uh, tripwire hook design uh, up there. You see that in the expender. And I haven't converted the rest of the features yet. But I do have the hoppers stored in a chest anyway. Need to add the uh, one wide gap uh, merger system. The, the ride and grind technology I call it and uh, some automated ender pearl disposal. So yep, this is where I come to do all my XP grinding. You can see why I need to change it. I got XP floating everywhere and you gotta kinda run around in circles to pick it up. Pretty annoying, uh, but it does work pretty well. Pretty efficient. And yeah, I was pretty proud of the way this thing turned out. Obviously, I was able to uh, improve on it a little bit with the expender and I can't wait to do that here. So, all right, without further ado, let's head on over back to the nether hub so we can get a location for the, uh, the gold farm. I'll meet you there in a second. All right, back here at the nether hub. Now I'm just going to grab some material. going to have to bring this up in bunches. Let's see, the first thing I'm going to need is a lot of hoppers. So let me grab some of those, and I will want to, yep, I want to cover them as I go. Yeah, it's definitely going to take me a couple trips. Here's the things I'm going to need. I'm definitely going to need some ladders so that I can get to the very top of the world, and uh, I'm going to need some obsidian and flint and steel so I can make myself a portal to get back. So if you haven't guessed it by now, we're going to go on top of the nether. Um, if you haven't seen that in my channel either, uh, it's there. I got a tutorial on how to get above the bedrock and the ceiling of the nether. But you don't need to watch that because I'm about to show you. So I've already kind of scattered this out. I just went all the way up. Got a little double wide ladder. I don't know why I did that, but it's kind of cool. Give me a little room to breathe as I'm climbing. It is quite the climb. You can see we're getting up there. And we want to get to 126 is where we're going and that way we we know that there's only one layer of bedrock above us so let's see here I already looked around in here and found it right here you can see that spot so um, right now I'm at uh, we'll just say we're at 125 if you're counting the I position which means that's 126 127 and then up there will be the top of the bedrock so Here's how you do it. Ladder. And you can see there's only one wide space, right? So what's going to happen when I ender pearl onto this ladder, or basically into this space? Climb right up. Here we go. That was it. <laughs> That's the, it's that easy. Oh, you can see we're on top of the bedrock. Y128 feet position. So, yep, this is where we're going to build uh, up here. So first things first, okay, somewhere over here is where I was coming up, and I will want to put a portal really close. So let's turn around and make sure I don't cover up my spot I came up on. And we'll just build a portal here. Four. I'm just going to do the whole square portal. I got the obsidian, so why not? Looks good. Less chance of messing it up. 
light that up. And before I go in, I'm going to drop some of this stuff off because it's going to take me a couple trips. So I'll just throw down some chests here. going to need what? We had three chests full back, back in, in the hub. So do that. And I'll just throw some of these hoppers in the top. And then I just want to show you, I'm going to leave the ladders because I'm going to need those to climb. We're going to go all the way up to the build height, which is uh, about 255, I guess, 256. They don't let you put blocks at, but uh, anyway, um, let's go ahead and see where this goes. Yep, cool. Right back to my base. So it is a one-way street. If I go back through here, it won't link back up to the portal above bedrock. You, no matter what you do in the overworld, you cannot get that portal link to above bedrock. It's just the way it is. So it is going to take me a couple trips to get all this material moved up there. I will spare you that, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so I am up here at 224. I just put a ladder all the way up, and I brought up my three chests of material here that I'm going to need to build this thing. It's all up here. This is kind of the central platform and from where you stand you actually want them to be more than 24 blocks away uh, and that's where they'll spawn. So we're just going to do one cell and uh, you're going to need a bunch of hoppers and all that stuff for them to fall onto. And uh, we are ready to build this thing. So sit back and relax, and I will get this done as quickly as possible. Here we go. Okay, whew, it's finally done. Yep, that was a pretty big build. Luckily, I didn't die at all. <laughs> yeah, right. I think I died about 
five or six times. In fact, uh, one of the times a pigman got aggressive at me and uh, I couldn't get my stuff back. So a lot of it fell down there, but uh, unfortunately my armor and my pick and my sword and everything, uh, it just got stuck up here somewhere and I couldn't get back to it. So, yeah. Looks like I'll be uh, going on another enchantment frenzy and digging for more diamonds before the next episode. Anyway, this seems to be working just fine. Alright, still coming in, you can see it. So cool. Yeah, I think I'll station myself up at the top here. AFK overnight. Let's see how much gold I have in the morning. And while we watch the pigman raining down, let me give you some options for next week. So make sure you vote. And uh, here we go. Option number one is to basically finish this thing up. Item elevator, item sorter, just wrap it up 100% done. Call it good. Uh, that's option one. Option two is start a whole new big project. Now can't promise I'm going to finish it in one week. I'm pretty exhausted from this one, so we'll see how I recover. And that big project would be start a wither skelly farm, because I still would like to have a beacon. And uh, probably put it at the Enderman farm or something, so uh, you can get regeneration, don't have to worry about eating. And uh, option three is to basically do odds and ends. You know, I, I mentioned, we kind of did a world tour earlier. You probably saw a lot of things that needed touched up, things that need finished. The witch hut needs a little work. Um, stuff all over the place. So uh, we can just kind of go around to, you know, each of the things that have work left to be done and take care of odds and ends, basically. So let me go back through that one more time real quick. Option number one is to finish the gold farm. Option number two is to start a wither skelly farm. And option number three is to clean up, do some odds and ends around the world. <laughs> Look at these guys raining down. This is cool. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed the video this week. Uh, it was a lot of work getting here, but we got it done. Oh, there we go. Perfect timing. <laughs> it's so loud, too. It's hard to see if anything's dropping from, like, gas here, but that's all right. At least I know it works. They're spawning. They're getting killed. And, uh, yeah, pretty happy about it. So if you like the video, make sure you uh, click that like button for me. It really does help the channel a great deal. And, uh, you know, all those other good things. Pass it on. Tweet it out. You know, if you're not subscribed, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. Because there'll be more of these episodes to come. So with that said, have a good one, everyone. See you later.